Well, welcome JDS students, faculty, staff, and all of our friends that continue to support our chapel service. I am delighted to be with you, welcoming you to worship with us, to sing with us, to study the word with us, to pray with us, but also to impact the world with us. My name is Dr. Oscar Williams, and this is the day that the Lord has made. We should be rejoicing and glad in it. This month, you know, we've been talking about Psalms 23, a very familiar passage, focusing on verse five, my cup runneth over. And this week we focus on our cup running over with the fullness of the word of God. Yes, we can get so full of God's word, full of his truth, that not only does our cup run over, our spirit, our hearts, everything about us flows in abundance. So as we worship God today, we worship him asking God to fill us even more with his word, with his truth, with his promise, and with his purpose. Come on y'all, let's worship. Lord, today we come to you with gratitude, knowing that our cups are full and are overflowing because of your goodness toward us. Mere words cannot express the joy in our hearts, so we'll just say thank you. Thank you for sending the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, to fill us up with your presence, to lead and to guide us, and to bring correction and consolation to us. Thank you that the infilling of the Holy Spirit is not limited to a one-time experience, but it can happen repeatedly. So Lord, today, we ask that you fill us up again. Fill us full of your spirit. We welcome him in now to perform a fresh new work within us. And we are forever grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. Your name is something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name, your great name. We love to, we love to call your name. Call your name yeah. is something we cannot we explain.
Let us bring our empty souls, our thirsty minds and hearts to the wellspring who is God and allow for him to fill us once again with his presence. Dear Lord, we confess that your word is life to us and without it, our souls long for spiritual direction and nourishment. Your word says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We recognize that filling our hearts and minds with your word helps us to build our faith. It provides direction that illuminates the right path for our lives, and it grants us sound counsel. Your word has also been given to us to reveal irrefutable truth, instruction, and correction. We know that the more we meditate on your word, the more the eyes of our understanding become enlightened. So may we learn more of you and your will for our lives through your word. And as we learn, may we commit ourselves to not just hearing the word, but being doers of your word also. Once we know the truth of your word, May it free us to do what you have decreed is right and good for our lives. May it change our perspectives and behaviors and ultimately change our lives. Heal us and cleanse us, O oh God, through your word. Empower us through your word. Deliver us through your word is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from Psalm 119 and 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Our New Testament reading comes from John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Greetings, Jake's Divinity School family and friends. Truly, it is an honor and a privilege to approach this moment today to offer this homily for this chapel service. I give honor to Chancellor Jake's and President Ford for this wonderful opportunity to communicate the word of God today. Let's pray. Father, I love you and I thank you for this moment. I ask that in this moment, you continue to extend your grace, continue to extend your mercy, and continue to give us the desire to learn more about you and who you are. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us go to Colossians 3, verse 16. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. That scripture means so much to me. 
Because when the word of God dwells in you, it means that it overtakes you. It means that you are full of his word. The subject today is no longer empty. No longer empty. I know what it feels like to be empty. I know what it feels like to go in life and even to do ministry and be empty. If you look at this glass, and if you look at this bottle, you will see that both of these are vessels. But only one of them is carrying out its true purpose. The glass has been molded. It's been blown. It has grooves. And it's beautiful. But it's not carrying out its true purpose. Because it's empty. However, this bottle, even though it's smaller than the glass, it's holding something. And therefore, it's carrying out its purpose. I want to talk today about the difference between being empty and full. The difference between being empty there's nothing in here. And being full, if I was to open this top, all of this water would, would come out. Life brings about challenges to us. And it causes us many times to forget how significant we are to God. God has desires for us to be closer to him. He has desires for us to dwell with him. He has desires for us to have communion or relationship with him. But many times we disqualify ourselves before understanding the full magnitude of the purpose that he has because we have settled for being empty. When I was a kid, we used to go to this restaurant called Golden Corral. And my mother would ensure that we ate she would ensure that we ate because a lot of times we had church afterward. But also she would ensure that we ate because we needed the nourishment. We needed the nutrients. We needed food. To survive. And with full bellies, we would walk out of the restaurant and we would go laughing and playing. And sometimes we would go to the park and we would just use all of our energy. And I realized something that as I was a, as a child and even now as I'm older and I think about it, that my mom always wanted to guarantee that her children were full. And the reason that she did this is because running on empty causes you to miss out on purpose. Running on empty causes you to miss out on purpose. Somebody I'll type in the comments right now. I'm going after my purpose today. I'm going after my purpose today. I'm going after my purpose today. But I only find my purpose. Watch this. By spending time in the word of God. Why, Anthony? Because the word of God tells me who I am. I'm the lender and not the borrower. I am above and not beneath. The word of God tells me who I am. So it doesn't matter what my haters call me. It doesn't matter what the past may try to label me by. It doesn't matter what my family may try to hold me to. I know what the word says about me. Is there anybody out there in this virtual family today who can decree and declare, I know what the word says about me? And because I continue to come to the table of the word, I continue to feed myself the word. I now know what it feels like to run on full. My grandmother used to say when I was a child, I believe I'll run on and see what the end is going to be. 
And the only reason that my grandmother was able to run on the way that she does, and my grandma, she's 75 right now, still preaching the word of God, still traveling the country, doing these things. She's been able to do that because she has been full of his word. The word of God, according to Hebrews 4 and 12, is quick. It's powerful. Sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God, family, is of high importance. Because it does two things. Watch this. Number one. The word of God gives life. Write that down. The word of God gives life. Psalm 119, 25 says, my soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. What does that mean? There was a moment where I felt like I was dying. I felt like I couldn't make it out. I felt like my life is on empty. My job is on empty. There's no financial increase. I'm in a wilderness all by myself. I'm cleaving to the dust because the dust is all that's there in the wilderness. And in that moment, my request to God was quicken me according to thy word. Quicken me according to thy word. What does that mean? I want to live a life that your word says about me. So if your word gives life, I can receive life. I wish that somebody right now would type it in the comments. Today, I receive life. Why? I'm going to commit myself to being full of the word. Number two, the word gives wisdom. Second Timothy three, 14 through 15. But continue thou in the things which thou hadst learned and hadst been assured of, knowing of whom thou hadst learned them and that from a child thou hadst known thy holy scriptures, which are able to make thee. Here it is. Wise. Unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ is the, the, the word of God is able to make thee wise. I was reading about Solomon earlier and how he could have asked God for any and everything. But he said, Lord, I need wisdom and knowledge. Why? Because without wisdom and knowledge, I cannot live out the purpose that God has called me to. And many times we pray for the cars. That's nice. Many times we pray for the house. That's nice. But is there anybody out there in our family today who would just want to ask God, God, give me wisdom. But I understand wisdom. Hear me clearly because wisdom comes through God. But God According to the Bible, has the, the word of God is, is the breath of God breathed. And it transforms into scripture. So because of this, when I approach scripture, I gain life. I'm talking to every person out there who feels today that you are just spiritually dehydrated. You can't even move. You can't. You're just malnutritioned in the spirit. The Lord told me to tell you in this homily today that if you find my word, you find life. I want to be full of his word and I no longer want to be empty. Because just like these two vessels. You can identify them as vessels. But only one of them. Can you identify as being full? I want to tell you today, family, you're meant to be full. You are not meant to live a life of emptiness. You're not meant to live a life. Unsatisfied. You're not meant to live a life where you're not achieving and going after the things that God has given you according to his word. So when we look at scriptures like Colossians 3 and 16, we take into consideration that this scripture is specifically focused on the indwelling of the word. See, it's one thing to know his word, but it's another to allow that word to dwell in you. 
It's another to allow that word to dwell in you, because when the word of God dwells in me, watch this. I have the potential. To allow that thing to come a part of my daily routine. The word says, let the word dwell in you. That, let's start at that, that first word, let. That, that, that's permission. That's access. I want to give the word access to me. I give the word access to me. Why? Because without giving the word access to me, it can't truly change me. How do I do this? I remove, watch this, my pride. Number two, I remove my ego. Why do I remove my ego and pride? Because I want to under, I, I really want to, to understand, even in my own life, that, Lord, I need to submit to what your word says. And sometimes that's a hard pill to swallow because submission is foreign in some places and submission is foreign to some people and submission is foreign to some situations. But watch this without submitting to the word of God. It can't truly change me. Well, Anthony, how in the world do I submit to the word of God? I apply it to everything that I do. I apply it in the morning when I wake up, I open my Bible and I'm reading scriptures to to understand clarity, to understand insight. I'm not reading the Bible as a novel, but I'm reading the Bible as a guide. Because I can't make it through life. Without understanding what the word first says about me. So let the word dwell in you. Let the word dwell in you. And not only do you let it dwell in you, but you allow it to dwell in you richly. There there should be evidence, hear me, of the word of God dwelling in you. When I first looked at this, this, this bottle, I realized the significance is what the bottle is containing because this water takes the form of whatever vessel that it's in. If I was to pour it in this glass, it would take the shape of the glass. And being that it's in this bottle, it has taken the shape of the bottle. It's the same thing with the word of God. When it is poured into me, I become it. I find more significance. So I walk in the word of God. I speak. In the word of God, I speak the word over my life. I speak the word of my situations. I become a living and breathing carrier of the word. This is why we have to be careful in this process of allowing the word of God to dwell with us. I'll never forget one day I was driving on the interstate here in Dallas. And you know how we drive in, in Dallas. Um, praise God. And I was I was I was driving and I, I saw this truck that was containing gasoline. And what what surprised me, family, was this truck was weaving in and out of lanes. I mean, in and out of lanes, just going. And I thought to myself, if something was to run into this truck, it's so full of gasoline that if it hits at the right moment, at the right time, at the right speed, it would explode. And I thought to myself, I really wonder if the driver of this truck is aware of what it's carrying. I want to tell somebody today who, who's who's been in a moment to where you've been studying the scriptures, you've been going through life, you've been Uh, committing yourself to the study of the word of God every single moment. I want you to be careful and remember what you carry, because what you carry is significant. That gasoline had purpose to ensure that cars are able to drive, to ensure that uh, different areas are able to operate uh, correctly. But the driver wasn't careful. And he didn't steward it well. When you have the word of God dwelling inside of you, you number one, learn how to steward it well. Anthony, how, 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 how do I steward the word of God? I make sure that I live according to it. I do my due diligence by studying scriptures on character. 
and ensuring that my, my body and my life and my mind, and for those of you who are married, you make sure that your marriages are a reflection of what the word of God says. But some of us have not been looking to the word of God. And therefore, we are a reflection of everything else. We are a reflection of our addictions. We are a reflection of our flesh. A reflection of lies, a reflection of greed, a reflection of envy. And what God is saying today is I want to change your perspective. I want to change your outlook into a perspective and an outlook that is based in the word of God. Because when I find myself in the word of God, things begin to change. Even my language. Somebody have to type this in the comments right now. My language is going to change. Come on, type it. My language is going to change. When, when I see things that are not working the way that it should work, I'm going to speak what the word says over it. Come on. When I see that life is not going in the direction that I believe that God has for me, I'm going to speak the word against that thing. As the devil is throwing me curses, I'm going to throw out the word of God. Do I have anybody out there in our virtual audience today who can decree and declare that this time when I approach the next situation that comes, I'm going to throw the word at it before I throw myself or throw my hands. I'm going to throw the word of God. I'm having a good time today and I'm almost out of time. It says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with the grace. In your hearts to the Lord. That teaching and admonishing. Being able to provide correction. Being able to provide a standard for those of you out there who are preachers and carriers of the word of God, this word of God, we are supposed to hold up the standard of what the word says, holding up the standard of holiness and righteousness, holding up the standards of salvation. And then we sing with grace in our hearts. Why? Because the word of God, once it starts to change my life, I'll be able to sing a new song. Instead of saying, nobody knows the trouble I see, you can sing psalms like, I'm no longer a slave to sin, but I am a child of God. The word tells me who I am. I'm no longer a slave to fear. But I am a child of God. I understand this because the word tells me who I am. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The word tells me that he loves me. So my song changes. And when I live out this scripture, when I understand the significance of letting the word dwell deeply in me, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in our hearts. When I understand how to live out that scripture, I can truly understand why it's important to be full of his word. Why? Number one, the word of God gives life. Number two, the word of God gives wisdom. I'm almost out of time, my friends, but I want to leave you with these scriptures that I believe will help you stay full. Psalm 119, 105. Write this down. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, verse 16. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Psalm 119, 17. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. I want the word of God to become a part of who I am. And I want that same thing for you. 
Don't get caught up in trying to be the most extravagant vessel. Because you have some extravagant vessels that are empty. But maybe, just maybe, God has you in a place to where it may look insignificant to you. But because of what you carry, which is the word of God on the inside of you, you no longer are empty. God bless you. Father, we thank you this day for allowing us to understand that it is important to be full of your word. It is important to use that word as ammunition against the enemy, but to also use that word to direct our paths. We thank you that your word does so many different things in our lives. And we thank you that this day that we are able to embrace and accept your word. So, Father, allow us to dwell with your word, to sup with your word, to have communion with your word, because through your word, we understand you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Family, man, Pastor Winfield here, and I hope and pray that something was said, prayed, spoken into your heart that helps your heart, your cup, cup of your whole life be totally filled by the power of the word of God. For it is in that time, this time, that the infeeling of the word of God gives us the energy that we need, yea, the wisdom that we need to continue to move throughout the places and spaces of our own personal lives. But while we're moving today, I want to pray over you and confer a blessing. Let's pray. Father, I pray right now over my brother and my sister, I decree and declare, Father, that the word of God would give them the energy, the impetus, everything that they need in order for them to move in success, to move in victory, to move, Father, out and into the things that you're calling for them to move into. I pray that your word will have preeminence and prominence in their lives. And I pray, Father, that for all of us, that your word would be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway so that we can move into the things, be directed into the things that you're calling for us to be and to become all day today. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, my brother and my sister, that's all the time that we have for today. I want you to go forth in peace and in the power of the Lord, filled up with the word of God to love and serve the Lord and his people. Peace to you.